Hello, I am Marve from English Language and Literature Teaching Class. In this video, I'll be talking about a one-act play, The Zoo Story. Well, The Zoo Story is like a house that has many windows through which you can see many facts, um, many tales, many criticism and many other concepts. Well, in this video, the window we are going to look through is the social class. So let's begin with my content, which uh, includes the short biography of Edward Albee and historical background about the zoo story and lastly the social class concept. So here is the writer of the masterpiece, Edward Albee, who was born in 1928 in America. Um, he was an adopted child who had never good relationship with his um, family and with the society uh, actually. And he was one of the best critics and got many awards such as National Medal of Arts and Tony Award for Lifetime Achievements. And he had many other masterpieces such as The American Dream and Who's Afraid of uh, Virginia Woolf. Well, the real deal is that every person, including us, is, um, get affected uh, get affected by the period in which he lives, right? And it is a fact that there is an indissoluble bound between uh, literature and history. In that point, let's see the historical background of the play. Well, we need to talk about two theories uh, when it comes to historical background. One of them is uh, Marxism. Uh, it's a theory based on the ideas of Karl Marx. Uh, who was a philosopher born in Germany. And he says that this is a conflict theory that suggests the fact that um, society is in a conflict with one another. And the gap between rich people and the poor people get bigger and bigger day by day. So did the conflict, as we're going to see in the play. Uh, for, the, for better comprehension, we need to look at the other theory, which is Capitalism. Capitalism um, represents the society you, I, and all of us live in today. It's an economic system ruled by the private ownership, uh, which means today's society is in the control of um, some people who rule their own factories, own businesses. Well, the Industrial Revolution had the capitalist way of um, thinking, which separated the society as middle class, who were the factory owners, and the working class, who were, um, who were working in those factories. And Karl Marx told the system as totally wrong because it was only encouraging inequality. And the gap never decreased between um, rich and poor. So poor people stayed as poor, and rich uh, people stayed as rich. So here is a question. How might these theories affect the play? Let's see. Well, um, Albert Albee was born into an age in which the post-World War occurred. Um, after the war, America um, started to uh, become a dominant and powerful country of which people turn into a consumer society. Uh, people started to buy um, luxury items such as new brand televisions, new brand cars. And when it comes to uh, those televisions, there were many um, shows or programs or TV series all about the nuclear, uh, I mean, the ideal white middle class families, including happy children, happy and careful mothers and the patrons of the houses, so the fathers. But none of the shows cared about the whole society. So Albie wanted to take an action and wrote this play. And in an interview, uh, he said that Albie uh, wanted to challenge the audience, wanted to um, make them get uncomfortable, want, wanted to um, make them run away and come back to the theater again. Well, obviously he achieved what he wished to do. So let's see how he made it. 
Well, the play takes place um, between two men and we need to take, um, we need to have a deeper look at them. Uh, we need to describe them in detail to understand the real deal of the social class concept. And here we have Peter and Jerry. Uh, Peter is described in the play as a man in his early 40s. He wears um, tweeds, he smokes a pipe, and he carries horn-rhymed glasses, while Jerry is described as not poorly but carelessly dressed. Well, through the conversation of the men, there are something we are sure of as the um, readers of the play or watch, watchers, the audience of the play. Let's see. Uh, Peter has money, a good salary, a good job. Peter has two cricketers in his house. Peter has a cat. Peter has two televisions. Peter has a um, good family with two uh, daughters and he lives in a wealthy um, neighborhood. On the other hand, Jerry has no money, no job, no salary. He hasn't got any relatives or any friends. He hasn't got any bird. He hasn't got any cat. He hasn't got any television. But he lives in an apartment uh, which is very crowded and not a good one to live in, actually. And he has got a landlady who has a dog uh, the dog always attacks him i mean attacks him whenever he sees jerry long story short peter belongs to the upper class while jerry is a member of the lower class now that we have seen the um, characteristics of the men i mean the classes actually here are some quotations from the um, for, from their conversation to understand the deal uh, better. Peter says, "Well, I make around eighteen thousand a year, but don't carry more than forty dollars at any one time in case you are a a hold up man." Haha. <laughs> Well, can you see how he humiliates um, Jerry by saying a hold up man? It might be a joke, but Jerry doesn't seem that he's having fun. But he says, where do you live? Oh, look, I'm not going to rob you and I'm not going to kidnap your parakeets, your cats or your daughters. Well, classes uh, might make people blind to each other as in this example but being poor doesn't make jerry a hold up man um, he hasn't got any money but it doesn't mean that he is a robber well uh, the more they speak the more they find themselves uh, themselves in an uneasy mode and at the end of the conversation it turns out to be a quarrel um, and you know what the quarrel is uh, the quarrel is over the bench they sit on i mean they fight for the bench here is the um, quotation from their conversation jerry says i'm on your precious bench and you are our ne you're never going to have it for yourself again peter says look you get off my bench i don't care if it makes any sense or not i want this bench to myself can you feel the tension between them it is just um a public place and it is or it is um a public bench that everyone can sit on it so there must be something beyond the bench so here is a question what could the bench symbolize? Let's see together. Harry says, you have everything in the world you want. This is probably the first thing in your life you have uh, had anything more trying to face than changing your cat's toilet box. Stupid. Don't you have any idea, no even the slightest, what other people need? Do you see? Here is the real deal. One man wants the bench because he has 
everything so he can have the bench as well. On the other hand, the other man has literally nothing, but he would like to have at least the bench. So it can be said that mm, the bench is uh, a symbol for the satisfaction to Peter and a symbol for um, Jerry's jealousy for mm, the stable and comfortable life of Peter that Jerry would never have it. So it is uh, obviously seen that social classes may affect people in many ways, such as it may um, make them overwhelmed, stressed, jealous of others, or it can make them blind or selfish. Um, well, the message, the actual message here is that whatever the system is, whatever uh, the social class we belong to, we need to take an action to change ourselves, to change the world into a better place. Because as it is uh, seen in the Plutarch uh, speech, an imbalance between rich and poor is the oldest and most fatal ailment of all the republics. So we need to start uh, changing the world by changing ourselves. Thank you so much for listening to me.